Unfortunately, today is the last day that Universal Analytics will be running, which is like, I don't know, it, it's kind of sad. It feels like losing like a friend or like a blogging partner or something. The entire time I've been blogging, UA has been what we've used. Like that's, I've never used anything else for my analytics. So it's kind of crazy to lose it. And when we lose it, we're gonna lose all of its data. So this is not a, you need to do this in the next five minutes kind of thing, but this is something you should do when you have a free moment for sure. When Universal Analytics stops collecting data, Google has not said that we are going to completely lose everything. It's understood based on what they've told us that we will get some time to get the information out of it. That doesn't mean though that they're gonna like leave it existing for the rest of time because that takes up space on their database. So of course they don't want that. So the best thing you can do to actually have access to your data after this is to save it. And the, there's a really easy way to do that. Um, there technically are a couple ways. So the first way is manually. If you just wanna open up a spreadsheet and pull only the information you care about. So that might just be page views and sessions every month for the last year or two, whatever, um, that's fine. If that's all you ever look at, then that might be all that you need. However, the reason that we want to save stuff is for comparison's sake. So I would actually say do this method instead where we're gonna get too much data and I would rather that for sure. So what we're gonna do is right now I'm in the audience overview tab. We're going to set our date range. And so whatever the date range is here is what it's going to pull data for. So you could literally go back to the beginning of time. This site started though uh, about June last year, so it won't have anything before that. I could in theory go further, but there will just be nothing to pull. So for this one, I'll pull from where it is. However, for my main site, I have been able to do it for like multiple years, which is really nice. If it gets a bit overwhelming though, like my main site is about six years old now, I exported year by year. That way I could have the data saved in files that are just a little bit easier to process. <laughs> so you're not like, okay, in this six year thing of data, or if God forbid your site is like 20 years old and you're like, fuck, this is bad. Um, instead, we're gonna choose whatever date range we have. For this site, it's kind of nice that it's basically now um, as of a year ago, so that's great. Then we're going to just up here, hit export. And then you can select whether you want PDF, Google Sheets, or Excel. For me, I like Google Sheets because I don't really want to have to save it to my laptop. I will lose everything if it's in my laptop anywhere. So we're going to put it into a Google Sheet. And then here, what we have are the number of users every single day. So now we have that bit of information. So if you want something different, if you wanted page views, if you wanted sessions, you're going to change it here and then you'll get page views. Then you'll get sessions. You can have whatever metric you want. If you have verses, you can even have both. Where did my sessions go? There they are. So there you have it. Now we have both. So if I export this to my Google Sheets, Now you're going to see that we get page views and sessions for that day, every single one of those days. And yes, this can seem like a lot of data to pull. You're like, oh, Nina, why do I need to have every single day broken out? I think it's better to have it, to be honest. Like again, I'd rather have too much data than too little data. And it's pretty easy to get ChatGPT to make you a formula that's going to go through and pull um, to give you like a summary of the page views and sessions for each month that these things are running for. So that's an option. But if you're like, you know what, I really don't want days, you can select months over here. This is the cool thing is that like it will adjust the data. I gotta have so many Google Sheets after doing this. I'm gonna really confuse myself um, and my VA who has access to this file. So here you go, if you just wanted months, it's going to give you the months. Now it doesn't name them, which is kind of frustrating to be honest. Like I do think that's a flaw here, but it's going to give you the rough amounts of everything, or not the roughs, pardon me, the actual page views and sessions with whatever month it has determined. And I don't know why it starts with zero. To me, that makes zero sense, but um, yeah, but that's what it does. So this is how you're going to export this basic data. 
Now, if you want to export, which is another thing that I did, is I went to my site content, all pages. I wanted to know the traffic for specific pages for this period. So we still have June 1st, 2022 to June 29th, 2023 set up there. We have page views up here because I really care more about page views per post than I do about um, the, what's it called? The sessions per post. I'm going to select month because for pages, I'm never really looking day to day. And then if I export this, once it loads, there we go. So now we're going to get the page and then this gives us the page views and all that stuff that we saw there um, with like the differences. But I like having like the month index down here as well. Um, you technically don't need it. Now, something I did forget to say there, sorry, I always forget to say this, is you have to expand the view. So on this site, I have about, I think, 30 posts now or so, maybe 40, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm going to do about 50. But if you know you have more, then you're going to pick a higher number. And do remember that things like your search pages, any like category archive pages, like you can see blog page 234 here, um, those are going to count as a page. So even if you only have maybe 20 posts, 25 probably isn't enough because of those variations. But if I do 100, I'm not gonna have 100, I don't think anyway. Oh no, I do, geez. Like look at how many searches there are. And there's all sorts of these extra like little bits of referrals from Facebook and things like that. So you're gonna get those variations. Um, that being said, they're like two, three, we're not optimizing search pages, so you don't really need it. Um, but in case there's a post or two that's stuck in there, it's a good idea to grab it and then export it. That way you have all of these page, uh, all of the information for all of these pages. So yeah, that's how I would do that. Um, and what else? Oh, I was, I forgot to say something else. Oh yeah. So for this one, sorry, I need to clarify these. Um, it is going to be for the period that we've selected. So like this post has gotten this many page views from June 1st to June 29th. This is not the monthly page views. So if you want that, you're gonna have to do this month by month, which I know is a bit frustrating, um, but I do think it's worth it to get all that information. And it doesn't take that long, to be honest. Like, especially for this, I don't think you need the entire site's history. I would say you probably need six months to a year's worth. Um, just because we have some posts that are seasonal. So like in Ottawa at Christmas post, um, if I just take the last six months, we're going to have it like finishing its peak basically when I start that. Whereas if I take a year, I can really see how it oscillates over time and get a better picture of it. Um, yeah, so that's why I do recommend taking a significant chunk. That way when you're doing a content audit, you can really compare rankings and um, the page views to go along with it to see if there was a drop. Yes, it's not going to be perfect because obviously page views and sessions are different in G4, but this is definitely something that can help. There are other things that you can also take if you want to go by acquisition to see like what came from where sort of a thing and then maybe compare like how Pinterest is performing percentage wise to Google Search Console or whatever. Like what I've done here, you just do everywhere, basically. <laughs> That's how this works. Um, if you want to do landing pages as well, so where people arrive from, um, if you did want to go through like your acquisition, if we went to overview, here you can see like each thing. And if you click into search console or organic search, pardon me, you're going to get just what people searched for. Um, so then you could just export the search console traffic for these things instead if you want to. Now, I don't love this because as you can see, there's the not provided, and not set. And that comes from people who did things incognito or for like Google just didn't pick stuff up. It doesn't always. So I don't know what page they ended up on. So it doesn't really help me to know that something got 35,000 page views over this year because what was it? <laughs> like, and it probably was a bunch of different things combined. So I just kind of ignore this one. Um, and I focus more on the audience. You may also, if you do a lot of brand deals, want to pull some demographic and interest data. That way you have the history of that to share with people. Like, look, this much of my audience are interested in this thing, whatever. There's really no harm exporting more than you think you'll need 
because we really don't know when this is sunsetting and like the code stops working, but we don't know when the full thing is like actually ending and like they're going to get rid of the data that, so we can no longer see it. Um, people are hypothesizing six months. We don't know for sure. So I would definitely make this a July project for yourself um, and just try to go in and get the most important data. Even if all you do today or in the next couple weeks is just export um, like the mass amount of everything from like go to your audience, export the entire history with page views and sessions, even if it's not broken up by month or something, go to um, the all pages and export all of that, even if you don't have it broken down by a month. As long as you have something, you'll be more safeguarded, but you'll also just be equipped because you'll have the information on your content. And that's why this matters. So this is what I've been doing. And then I've just organized it into like in my Google Drive, I have a folder that just says basically like old Google Analytics data. Um, right now, I think it actually says Universal Analytics data, not Google Analytics. And then in there, I have one folder for each site. And then I've tried to name these appropriately because I have VAs I have to share this with. And my Google Drive's a nightmare enough already. So I'm trying to be better going forward. For yourself, you don't necessarily need to do that. And if your desktop is less of a nightmare than mine is, maybe you just download it there. That's fine too. Um, but having this content is going to equip you with the knowledge to be able to do content audits, to compare things, and to see your improvements. And when you're just having a bad day and going like, oh, my traffic only grew 2% this month, it's awful. When you look back two years and see that like, okay, but back then you were at one page view a month, it makes you feel a lot better. That being said, mine is a nightmare because I have deleted the codes so many times and it'll be very nice to maybe not have that happen every month. <laughs> like this one is from, I forgot to pay for the domain to be re-upped because I was so sure that it was set to auto renew, even though it kept emailing me, telling me it wasn't, but I was like, no, nope, I know better. And then my other side, I always think I can code. So like, unfortunately, my graphs aren't the beautiful, perfect uptick. There's always the random, like Nina broke something terribly. But still, over time, even just from this last year, where like I didn't really do much on the site, and then by December it was doing well, then I installed Azoic and it died, but then it's been doing well again since I removed Azoic. And like, it's nice to see for a site that I heavily neglect. And it does make me feel like maybe it wasn't the waste of $100 to start this site. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, how you're going to export all of your Google information. And I do recommend sitting down and doing it. Maybe just like do it over a nice Friday afternoon cocktail a bit early. Whatever. Have a good time. And to everyone in North America, happy almost Canada Day and happy almost almost fourth of, ugh, happy almost 4th of July. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Um, yeah, so even as we're crying over the end of Universal Analytics, at least we've got a bunch of holidays and a long weekend so we can drown our sorrows. <laughs> okay, bye everybody.